Hi, welcome to the Mike Page Doodle Club. I'm Mike Page, and today we are going to be drawing a cow. So grab your drawing supplies, some paper, maybe a milk bucket, and let's get right to it. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. The important thing is that you make your mark. Park Street Books is proud to sponsor the Mike Page Doodle Club. Find them locally at 504 Main Street, Medfield, Mass. Open Monday to Saturday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Sunday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Or visit parkstreetbooks.com. No matter where you are, that's parkstreetbooks.com. All right. If you watched last week's episode where we drew volcanoes, then you learned that I have recently been to the Azores, which is a very incredible place. Uh, it is a territory of Portugal. And it's a series of islands, I believe an archi archipelago. Um, and they have a lot of cows there. So I got to see a ton of cows while I was in the Azores. And I thought, maybe we should try drawing one. So here we go. This is going to be the start of the head. This is the top of the head here. And one eye will be over here, one eye will be about here. And the nose will be over in this area. Just to give you some idea of where we are on the cow. Uh, the Azores are incredibly green and blue. Um, but then you'll find a lot of beef and dairy farms that are also very black and white and some brown. Some of the brown is on the cows and some of it is in the field, if you know what I'm saying. You definitely have to watch your step in the Azores when, when you are near the farms. So we're going to put another eye over here. I saw a cow being born while I was in the Azores, something I have never seen. Um, it was simultaneously amazing and also a lot. Like it was a lot, <laughs> it was a lot. Uh, if you've never seen a cow being born, there's a lot going on there. Um, and uh, Joao, who owns the farm. He and Gina handled it quite well. Uh, Joao grabbed a rope and helped. He had the assist on the cow birth. Uh, he helped pull that calf right out. Um, and he handled it like it was nothing um, while my fiance and I kind of watched in shock. So, again, there's a lot going on in a cow birth. Um, now, this is going to be kind of a, I guess, the cheekbone. And again, the mouth will be down about here. Um, so now I'm going to make kind of a rounded letter L coming over into this area. And now I'm going to kind of round off. Hopefully now you're starting to see the cow's muzzle, I guess. I'm not, not even sure what you call this on a cow. So we kind of have that. So it'll be slightly boxy at the bottom, but with a very, very smushed rainbow shape right here. Um, then our cow will want some nostrils to breathe. So there's one, there's the other, and then I'm going to come down a bit here and kind of out, and then we'll do that, and then I'm just going to kind of scribble shade that in a little bit. And in this part of the face, 
it's going to be dark. And I'm just kind of doing a dotted line here for now, and that way um, nothing is too set in stone. Uh, and for you following along, you'll be able to see where my line is, and if you're using marker or whatever, you can adjust how you want to be coloring yours in. But so this area will be the darker um, black or a very dark gray. And our cow will want some ears. So there's one ear. There's the other ear. And then inside of this, we'll make a quick line like that. And I'm also going to add some little scribbles right here. Uh, if you want your cow to have a tag, like farmers will typically tag their cows. They don't really brand them anymore. Um, but if you wanted to tag your cow as a dairy cow, go for it. I'm going to leave that off. Um, but it's up to you how you want to do it. Uh, just a couple quick scribbles up at the top for some hair. And now our cow is going to want a back and a neck. So I'm going to come across like this. And the neck will be coming down about here. Um, the cow that we saw giving birth, <clears throat> it was kind of amazing. We basically saw the entire process. Um, so when we got to the farm, the cow was just starting to show signs that she was going to have that calf very soon. Um, and I think it was probably about an hour and a half later, out came the baby calf. Um, it was long enough that the uh, mom seemed to really be going through an ordeal and she was not having the best day. Uh, but it was quick enough that I was surprised that there was already a baby calf. If that helps narrow down the window of time. Uh, but we were not on that farm all that long, so it wasn't, wasn't too long. Uh, and then our cow is going to want some legs, because without legs, it's ground beef. That's a dad joke. Again, I work with kindergarten and first grade kids. I hear that ground beef joke enough times in a year <laughs> that as soon as I said the cow needs legs, uh, that joke immediately came to mind. My apologies if you are above jokes like that. Uh, I, however, am not. Um, you don't need to draw the entire leg, just kind of imply uh, this is where the leg is separated still from the um, chest of the cow, the ribs. And here is the other leg in the back. And then we're just going to make a line coming over. And that's all we're making of this cow, except for spots. You can make your spots in whatever pattern you'd like. That tip is not very sharp anymore, but this one is. Uh, you can make your spots in whatever pattern you would like. Um, Holstein cows will have spots. And they are typically black and white. Sometimes there's some brown in there. Um, Jersey cows will not really have spots and will be brown. Uh, Norwegian red cows <laughs> are like a reddish brown. How does Mike know so much about cows, you ask? Uh, because I was staying with some dairy farmers and they know a lot about cows. I learned more about cows in the Azores than I think I have my entire life. Um, 
they really know their cows in the Azores. Uh, I was astonished they could, uh, so Gina and Joao could actually tell you which cow you were looking at. They have names for all of their cows. Um, I'm actually blanking on what this particular cow's name was. This is not uh, Margarita, but this cow was standing next to Margarita. <laughs> Um, but they have like 50 cows and they can tell you the names of all of them immediately, which is crazy to me because it's like, oh, that's a, that's just a cow. Um, but they see them standing in the field and they can tell from the markings, which one is which they also kind of know the personalities of each cow, which is, again, it's crazy, right? Like if you, if you don't, work with cows, you wouldn't even realize that um, that they do all have a different personality, but it's just like dogs and people and whatever else, um, different temperaments and um, some were more friendly than others, some came right over and wanted to be pet and scratched, and other cows uh, wouldn't give you the time of day. Uh, you can make these spots however big or small you'd like. I'm kind of going off of the pattern of this particular cow and kind of winging it. If I was actually doing this for um, a gift for Gina and Joao, I would definitely make sure to get these spots right so they would know which cow I drew. Uh, but since I'm assuming none of you out there have been to this farm, um, hopefully you're not sure what their cow's patterns look like anyway, and you will give me a little leeway on how I make my spots. So I'm improvising somewhat. I also, um, the family that we stayed with, Paul and the Tercia, um, I was absolutely flabbergasted. We got to the house where we'd be staying and I wasn't even through the gate yet, and I'm seeing these wood burned signs, wood burned and carved signs, which is something that I do um, here in the United States. And the first one I just said, oh, that's cool. The second one I said, who makes these signs? And Paul said, oh, I do. And I could not believe it that I had just flown 3,000 miles. Uh, and the first guy that I'm talking to does exactly the same thing that I do. Um, but he takes a very different approach. He uh, rather, I use um, wood carving tools and a wood burning pen to do it. He does his signs completely with a Dremel tool, which blew my mind. The uh, level of determination <laughs> that would be required to do it that way um, and the steadiness of hand that would be required to do it that way is unbelievable. Um, and he's making very high quality signs just with a Dremel tool and pieces of wood, which was really cool. He would switch out the different excessive tips um, on the Dremel for different looks. Um, but he's doing very complex things with pretty simple um, power tools, which I thought was really cool. And also, what are the chances, right? Somewhere, it's a small world played in the distance. Now you're singing that song. My apologies. And I'm just going to scribble all this in, and then we will be finished with our cow.
And again, you can color in the muzzle if you want, or you could leave it as is. Uh, and when you're finished, if you're particularly proud of it, go ahead and post it online and tag Mike Page Doodle Club so we can see your finished work. It's always fun seeing uh, your efforts. If you're not particularly proud of it when you're done, try it again. Usually things get easier with practice. And as Jim Sebring always said, the first thousand are the hardest. you're not content with how it came out, just keep going until it gets a little bit easier. There is our cow. Again, I don't remember what this particular cow's name was. I really wish I did. Uh, but I didn't know at the time that I took this picture that this would be the cow that I would be drawing. So I didn't pay enough attention to it, I guess. I think I'm actually going to switch back to the pen for this part and just kind of do some quick line shading here. And then the last thing I'm going to do is add the lower lip that I just realized I never added. And how is a cow going to chomp on all that grass without that lower lip? All right. I hope you enjoyed following along to draw a cow with me. And I hope you enjoyed uh, learning some random facts about cows. I don't have a lot of cow knowledge, but I did pick up some cool stuff along the way in the Azores. Uh, so thank you to Paul Natursia, Gina, Joao, Halbert, and everybody else that knows way more about cows than I do uh, that taught me a little bit on that trip. Uh, thanks for watching. Tune in again next week, and I'll see you then. Have a great day. Park Street Books is proud to sponsor the Mike Page Doodle Club. Park Street Books is an independent children's book and toy store. With nothing electronic in the store, Park Street Books encourages kids to read, play, and unplug. Find them locally at 504 Main Street, Medfield, Mass. Open Monday to Saturday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Sunday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Or visit parkstreetbooks.com no matter where you are. That's parkstreetbooks.com.